Doesn't it look ridiculous like with this hair like this and my hair like this? I don't know, I keep, I feel like it looks like I'm trying to be cute, but it's not. It looks just kind of silly. But I actually put on my Amazon wish list um, for I want ever since I went to France <clears throat> for my sister. It's my sister studied abroad there and we spent uh, my spring break of 2007, 2007 there. And I wanted, that was one of those things I wanted to bring home in the a beret and that never happened. So I decided this year to put in on my Amazon wish list that my mom that I set up with my mom. And now I'm kind of trying to wear my hats to show her that I wear hats. But I feel like this looks a little ridiculous. I mean, and then I'm worried that a beret will look ridiculous on me too. But I am not going to give up. I'm still going to keep. But you know what? I am going to do a tag, um, which is the end of the year, let's see, what is it, um, the end of the year book tag, and I know, um, and some of you will probably be thinking, but it's not the end of the year, well, I watched Jeez Wiz just do this video the other day, where I, um, and I think she made a good point that, I mean, there's only two more two more months after. This month is almost over, and then there's only two more months left. And, you know, a lot of people do start thinking about the end of the year. You know, what their goals are and what they're hoping for next year. And trying to get those last-minute books in. Um, so I figure now would be a good time to do it. Although I could have waited until November, but I decided to already think about it, so I may as well do it now. Okay, this is a tag created by Ariel Bassett, and I will, of course, post the original video on the drop box below. So here, um, let me find the, where is it? Okay, so let's see, let's, here are the questions. Okay, so question number one. Are there any books you started this year that you need to finish in? Oh, so many. I have this problem where I start books. Because I like think because ever since joining BookTube, I have come to realize that I am a bit of a mood. I am a mood reader, like most people, most readers. And there are a lot of books that I will start, and then it will be a long time before I finish them. Like the book, my reread of the book It. That, but I mean that 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 chunker is like over a thousand pages so as interesting and as familiar as i am with the plot sometimes you're just i'm just not always in the mood to read that kind of book and i'm talking about it by stephen king um the one with the kids who fight the clown and you know he represents fear and um and they actually i mean they made like a movie um a newer movie of it back last year and then they made and back in the 90s, they had a mini-series of it. But, yeah, that that thing is over a thousand pages long, so... And I've already read it once, so I don't feel that bad about it. I mean, I do feel still a little guilty, but that's one of them. I don't have that one here with me. And I actually re-bought a copy of that book that, this past year, because my copy was messed up, and I pawned it off my friend, off of Terry, actually, because her mom loved Stephen King. And I know that she likes horror, so I ended up giving it to her. And it's still readable. It's still in good condition. It's just, it's a little damp. And it's a little curled on the corners. And there's a little bit of tear. So, it, but it, it, it's not that bad. So, I mean, but I personally wanted to get another copy. And I knew my mom would be like, why do you have two copies of this book? Like, if she ever looked. And so I decided... I would buy my, a new copy and give her the other one. Give Terry the other one. But those are not the books I have here. Um, I started like I started this one more recently because this is the one of the books that I've had the longest, and that is Portrait of a Lady by um, Henry James, which is about this American woman who her aunt brings her to the UK to you know it's a coming of age story, and she ends up with three suitors and two of them she rejects and then the one she doesn't reject is not ends up being not the best choice so 
I've been wanting to read this for a while, and I was gonna, I was thinking about doing the um the autumn readathon, and I was thinking maybe I could include this one for the first challenge, but or not the first challenge, one of the challenges, which is to read an adult book with a young protagonist being the narrator or being or just being the protagonist, and I don't know if she if she's I don't. Like, I don't know how old she- I kept looking it up, and it didn't imply if she's a teenager or not. I'm guessing that, you know, she's at least in early 20s. But, I mean, I figured a lot of times women back in the day didn't marry until they- Like, they married at a kind of- we married kind of really young. We were at least late teens when we got married. But I started this more recently. I mean, literally, like, a week ago, I started reading this book. And I have not, um, but I have not come back to it yet. So, but I mean, like I said, it's only been uh, like a week or two since I've read it. Holy crap. <laughs> so I've been kind of in the middle. I hate doing that. I hate when I'm in the middle of a page, you know, when I don't stop on a break or in the, or the, don't stop at the chapter. <clears throat> but yeah, this one is going to be slow going though. Um, I also started East of Eden because I was watching, like, I watch Leslie from Words of a Reader. She talks about this, like, this, the author, um, Steinbeck quite a bit. And I read Steinbeck in middle school, one of his short novels, A Mice and Men. At the time, I didn't care for the novel, and I figured, you know, my tastes have changed. And I've been wanting to read this, and as, you know, I've gone really far in it, like, I don't know exactly if you say that's halfway, but but it's been so long that I almost think about starting over, but then it's like, that one pr I've gotten pretty far, and it's like, do I really want to start over again? Because I know if I st I'm still going to end up taking, like, another break, and then I might end up making the same mistake twice. But I like it. It's just slow moving. Like, a lot of the older books, like the classics and stuff, you know, they're, so a lot of them are very slow moving and it takes me a long time to read. Not that I don't like them, it's just, or that I'm not enjoying it. It's just that it's slow going. And then sometimes they're, and a lot of times the plots are kind of about a domestic life or something. So it's a little, a slower p plot. And sometimes I hate to say it, but I do get a little bored. You know, again, it's not that I don't like the book. It's just, you know, I, a lot of times I'm more prone to be in the mood for something a little more. So I also started, um, oh, and Well of Ascension is another one, but I don't have that one here. It's That one's in my purse. But that's another one. But I'm pretty sure I'll get that one done. You know, as long as I keep going with it and don't get sidetracked by other books. As in, like, I can read other books, but just as long as I don't put that book down for other books. Um, this is another one I saw more recently, I Capture the Castle, which is one of the books I got at the used bookstore. And, you know, after hearing a little bit more about the just about the plot of the book, I'm definitely a little more interested in it. Because it has a little bit of a romance. And, like, I was thinking it was kind of like that one that came out either last year or the year before. Um, that was like that memoir... The one with the woman and her her fa her parents were kind of they were always on the road. Her parents kind of reminded me hippies a little bit. Um, something castle, and I actually thought it was gonna be similar to that plot, which I cannot remember what the book is called. Something castle. I mean, it's one that I got from my mom. I don't remember, but anyway, I thought it was gonna be like that plot, but. From the description, it seems like it's a little more complicated, a little more interesting than that, that plot. And I'm on chapter four in this book. So I want to get back into reading this because I do like, the, again, like slow moving plot. Sometimes I lose interest for a period of time, sometimes a longer period of time. Um, this is another one. This is one that I want to read. Um, I also want to get this read soon because I want to be able to give it to my sister. So I think this one is going to take a little more priority over all the other books. Because, um, and that is Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin, Kevin Kwan. Um, this is 
one that I decided to check out after one of my one of the booktubers I like to watch whose name whose booktube name channel I still don't know how to pronounce. It's a reference to Outlander, actually. Her name is um, she, her real name is Sam. So there's like I know like I watch three booktubers with the name Sam, and she always talks about this book and how much she loves this book, and I am. <laughs> I also thought it would be kind of interesting considering that, I mean, I'm not Chinese, I'm Filipino, but and this is about a Chinese family in Singapore, but I am Asian, so I figured, oh, that'd be very interesting, and to some extent, I could potentially relate to it. Although I'm not as rich as these characters are, I'm more like the main character, Rachel Chu, as far as money, I think. I mean, I don't know how well off she is. I mean, she's obviously not as rich as her boyfriend's family, but... And I know that none of my, like, my grandmother is nothing like the, the, the boyfriend's family, as far as I know. Although she was, she was well off and they did have money and her family did. So, but she's not as mean as the women, as the, or as nosy, I don't think. Well, I know not the meanness, but maybe the nosiness. But yeah, I want to get, I want to give, the, so this is one of the ones I want to read for my sister. And then two other books that I want to read to be able to get read, to give, I mean, one of them I don't think I'm going to get done by this year. Is, but two, um, but The Kitchen God's Wife and John Adams, a biography by, the biography by David McCullough. Those are two books that I borrowed from my sister and my brother-in-law. So I do kind of, I need to get them done at some point. And so far they haven't been pushy about it or anything. Because, well, I think they don't really have as much time to read as I do. Because my two nephews, who are one and three, they gotta watch out for them and make sure they're taken care of. And then they both work. So it's not exactly, they don't have as much time to read. Which is another thing. Um, so, which I, so I totally understand. Although I keep recommending my sister, oh, you should check out audiobooks and stuff. Although I think she's more interested in listening to podcasts than audio. Which, that's another thing I added to my Amazon wish list was some, a couple audiobooks of books that I want to read. So, yeah, I gotta read that one. And this one, I definitely need to finish. This one I have had for a long time now. I got this when we moved here back in 2000. I don't know if I got it in the, when I, we got here in 2016, at the end of 2016, or if I got it in 2017. But this is one of those... Um, family saga books. It has um, it has a prequel as well, and a lot of people. I think a lot of people that, especially people I've, that have talked about this book, um, the, the booktubers that I've seen talking about, have did choose to read the other book, the prequel book. But in my mind, it's called a prequel for a reason. It's a sequel, so it was written after this book, but it's about the events before. But that does not mean you have to read it before. But that's just my opinion. I mean, if those people or any other person prefers to read the other one, which is called, um, I don't remember what it was, it's called Somerset, if they want to read that first, because it is about the events before that led to, that kind of led to the events in this book, then fine. You know, but I'm reading this one, and I'm not going to stop reading this one just so I can read Somerset first, because I already started this one, and I'm... I'm almost done. This is, again, another novel that's, even though the chapters are short, it's very slow moving. But I am really liking it. It's a family saga story. I like, I really enjoy family saga stories. Um, and it's like all these, it's basically about how this family and their plantation is kind of cursed. Not in a supernatural sense, though, unfortunately, but, well, not unfortunately. It's not a bad book. It's good. It's just, if you lean more towards the supernatural, then yeah, it's, it might not be the book for you. But it's, you know, it's how basically the people who are given this, inherit this plantation, they kind of become obsessed with it. And the plantation always comes first for them. And it's like, and it's told from the perspective of Mary Tolver and her grandniece. And then we get the perspective of the guy that loves Mary and wanted to marry her. But she, because she kept choosing the plantation over him, he couldn't wait any longer. So he, so it's about that drama and how that unfolds. And it's really good if you, especially like if you like historical fiction and family saga stories. 
Um, this is a fun, fun, beautiful story. It's a bit of a chunker, but the chapters are not that long. And I just got to finish this book this year. And that way I can go to Somerset and then maybe I'll donate these back to the bookstore. I don't know yet. That's part of my problem is I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna get another, I'm probably not gonna get another bookshelf for a long time and well. <clears throat> I also need to read North and South, an, another classic, more, um, which is basically Pride and Prejudice during the Industrial Revolution. And it's, I, so far I kind of, ref I've read Pride and Prejudice and I still kind of, and I've seen the movie several times, but I, so <coughs> I'm going in. Um, sorry, I still, for some reason, I still got that tickle in my throat. My nose is a little bit better, and my ears are starting to pop. But I got that tickle in my throat, and of course, I think it got worse since we came back to North Carolina. But, anyway, I really, I kind of prefer this one over Prime Prejudice. And maybe, maybe it's like, I'm um, maybe... Maybe I really do go try to go against hype sometimes because I do wait before I get popular books that are that were really hyped. I don't get them right away, so maybe to an extent, maybe in a way I do cave into the hype, or I have a problem. I have issues with the hype. I don't know, but I mean, I never openly complain when a book is hyped. I have no problem with it, but to and I did do a video kind of on this where I explained how. It's not that I reject books or dismiss books because they're hyped, but sometimes, but I will, sometimes I'm influenced by the, sometimes I am influenced a little bit by the hype, and I also wait until the hype dies down, and I'm trying to remember what else I said. I can't even remember what I said in that video. Um, well, you guys, if you guys are interested, I did do a video where I kind of talk about that. But anyway... But like I said, I think I prefer this one over Pride and Prejudice. It's it's really good. I like Mr. Thornton and Margaret Hale a little bit more than Elizabeth and Darcy. Although I kind of like, although, well, no. Actually, I think Margaret Hale and Elizabeth Bennet are kind of tied. But I definitely like John Thornton a little bit more than um, Fitzwilliam Darcy. But sorry if you love Darcy. I just I'm just not a huge fan of him. Of course, all these males in these books are all kind of messed up. Anyway, um, okay, I need to, I haven't even got to, I've, this is only question for one, and I haven't, and I noticed the video's kind of getting long, so. Yeah, this is, but this is really, I need to finish this, and I did, for some reason, all of a sudden, like last night, or early this morning before I officially woke up, I was like, oh my god, I had to read North and South, like, I have to get back into it. Um, oh, this is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Gaskell. So, there's that one. Um, and then the last two I have here are Never Night Watch. Again, another one that I saw more recently. It's a woman who, after her, um, her father is branded a traitor and killed, and then her mom and brother are sent to a sort of prison. She goes to the famous Bread Church, where she trains to be an assassin and decides to get revenge. And this is, this is really, really good. And... Like, a lot of people sell this as, like, a book that they, the, the kind of book that they wanted Throne of Glass to be, with the whole assassin, assassinating kind of thing. So I gotta read this one. And then, this one is another big one that I have to finish. I don't know why, this happened with the first book, too, with Six of Crows, where I just took a break in between readings of the book. And before we left to go visit my sister, I read a couple more chapters of it because I was, like, feeling guilty. And, but I also didn't want to bring it with me because it's a heavy book and it's hardback and I didn't want to bring too many hardbacks with me. I was already having trouble deciding which books to bring with me anyway. So, um, and I didn't get much reading at the time when I was there. But I gotta get back into this one as well. And in case this is the second book in the duology about a group of people who... Um, a group of criminals who they are sent on a mission, on a, on a heist mission to retrieve special drug that is, that affects and destroys the people, the people who use magic in this world, in the world of the Grisha. So, and yes, I'm one of those people who absolutely loves it. 
of course, why would I be reading Good Kingdom unless I absolutely love you, or at least like you? Okay, so, finally, let's get to question number two. Do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? <sighs> okay, at first I was going to say The Female Persuasion, but I'm pretty far into that book, so it's not like... So technically, if you want to be literal here, and referring to transitioning into the new year, then... I might be done with that book before the transition period, which I, in my mind is um, December. But, of course... Oh, well, no, actually, no, never mind. It says, actually, now that I'm reading this again, book to trans do you have an autumnal book to, tra to transition into the end of the year? So I guess I could have said that one, but I already started that one, and I'm pretty far into it. So I chose, I have... No, I, this is technically two books, um, and that is I need to read this last book in this year, in this trilogy, and it's The Conjuring of the Light, which I am not going to even bother doing the summary because most people have probably heard of this book, but this is the third book in the trilogy that I need to, I need to read this last one, and you know, all my other comp, my, the first two books, I had those in paperback, but because I bought this, like, last, like, last spring, so I was like, you know what, I want it, I don't want to wait anymore, so I need to buy new villains in hardback. Because, unfortunately, that is, my shelf consists of, like, a lot of, like, maybe the first couple books or the first book is paperback, and then all the rest of them are hardback, or some of them are in hardback, and, because I, I'm also not one of those people that's bothered by that. I don't, I don't get upset about that if like my books don't match. And then I also saw this book and remember that I gotta read this even though I don't know when the last book. That is The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss and like I said no one knows when the last book has come out. Just like I don't know when Gotham season 5 is coming. Seriously I have this okay I love the show Gotham. And on Facebook, I run this group, and then this, you know, I, was at, I wasn't even asking about the show. I even said, okay, this is not about the show. I was just asking, what do you guys think of Christian Bale's Batman? And then this one person, like, commented and was like, oh, I just love the show. I don't care about that. You know, well, they didn't say they didn't care. They said, I just love the show, and when is it coming back? And I did not know. I mean, even the, one of the, someone I watch on YouTube who kind of has more inside information than I do, only, like, not a lot, you know, he's not, like, on the set or anything, but he has more information. Um, he has access to more information. He even, he doesn't know when it's going to be. And this guy got on a mad, when I tried to explain to him, I was like, I don't know. Or you could, you know, watch the Comic-Con, the New York Comic-Con panel, or whatever, or go to this guy's site. And I was like, I post videos. He was like, I asked him a question, I, all I get is this crap. It's like, seriously, dude? I, you, I, and not only do I not know, and I already told him where he could go to figure out, which is not that hard, but also I specifically said in the dang on question that this was not about the show. So what was the point of him responding? And that just pissed me off. And unfortunately, that was during the time when I was trying to, there was an assignment due for class that I needed to work on, and I wasn't sure if she actually was going to collect it the next day or what. So it was like, I had to get that done as best I could. and But I was all, like, annoyed by this guy and everything. And, you know, it just frustrated me. Sorry, I was, you know, I, because of the whole Patrick Roth is having not gotten the third book out and people don't know when that's coming out, that got me thinking about that incident. But yeah, I also thought this would be a good one, too. <clears throat> I'm definitely getting more into reading longer books those big chunky books. It just depends. Like fantasy books, it's definitely easy for me to get those done. You know, it still will take me some time, but even if they're big chunky books, it's easier to get the fantasy books because most of the time they're all, they're action packed or something, you know. Okay, so, um, question number three. Is there a new release you're still waiting for? I'm just gonna say Kingdom of Ash. I mean, when I was thinking about this question, I had this whole explanation and everything before I answered it, but you know what, I'm just going to say Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Ash, the last book in the Throne of Glass series, because I still enjoy the series, although I have, 
I am going to, when I'm done with the whole series, I'm going to donate those to the bookstore. Okay, question number four. What are three books you want to read before the end of the year? Let's see. Okay, well, let's just say this one. Um, this one. And, um, I'll go with this one. You know, um, Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. Um, Elizabeth Gaskell's North and South and Roses. And there are several others that I was going to originally say, but I have these here and I don't want to get up. So. Oh, and I guess Portrait of, the La of a Lady I want to get done by the end of the year. But that's four books. And the question specifically said three books. Okay. My tea's cold. My mom might be like, your tea's getting cold. Okay. Next. Question number five. Is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? I don't know. Okay, I, I really, I've never thought about that before. I mean, so who knows, maybe The Female Persuasion will shock me or something. I don't, I don't know. Um, question number six. Have you already started? You scare me, Sophie. Um, question number six. Have you already started making reels in 2019? So I have thought about it a little bit, but I didn't really think about it until I watched Jean Swizz doing this, um, this tag. But here are the goals I'm thinking about for 2019. Goal one is one that I had last year, too, and that was read more of certain genres, meaning read more fiction, I mean nonfiction. Because I so far have only read one this year, and that was Home, a memoir of my early years by Julie Andrews, and I really like that one. And of course, you know, if you like Julie, if you like Julie Andrews, are a fan of hers, then yes, I would recommend that book. But I want to read more. Like I'm hoping to squeeze in one more nonfiction, and that is Marie Antoinette: The Journey by Antonia Fraser. And I'm gonna try and attempt to participate in in um, nonfiction November. But the problem with that is I'm not one of those people who can do like I get you know which actually kind of has to do with another goal I have on here. I struggle with getting being more participatory in these kind of things. Like I don't have a Twitter account, and there's like. And it's like kind of, you know, sometimes I struggle with getting creative in this channel and there are, there are limits that I have that I can't do, I can't fix. And there are limits that are my own, my own personal inner limits that I place on myself. But, um, so I can't, um. So that's my own, so it's kind of hard sometimes. I feel like I'm not participating enough in those, in these readathons and stuff like that. But I'm going to, I am going to read some nonfiction and who knows, maybe I can, maybe I can, I just, maybe I'm just going to get myself to be more, particip participate more, as at least maybe on Instagram, get more creative with my pictures and stuff. So I want to, so I'm going to read, like, I'm going to read the Marie Antoinette book, and I'm also going to read the Walt Disney, Walt Disney and a Triumph of the American Imagination that I got last Christmas. I'm going to start that one, but I don't think I'm going to get that done by the end of the year. But I'm going to start reading that for a nonfiction November. I also read the ghost story, like, I read reading about the ghost of, um, Jamestown, Yorktown, and um, I can't remember the other town it's called. It's basically the ghost of Virginia, one of the most famous towns in Virginia. I really enjoyed that. I like reading stories about, about ghost stories and stuff like that. I think that's really fun. So, and I put on here for 2009 to read two to three nonfiction. And like I said, I also got to finish reading. I want to, I don't think, I, again, I don't think I'll get done by the end of the year. I do need to read John Adams because again I it's my brother-in-law's book. So 
but I said two to three next year. Um, I also want to read some more class. I want to continue reading more classics. I've read quite several this year. Like I've read 1984. I think I read Sense and Sensibility this year. I don't know if I read Catcher in the Rye this year. That might have been a book I read last year. The same thing with Sense and Sensibility. No, I think I did read Sense and Sensibility this year. Um, and that was the one I read as a bunny read with Terry. Although I when I read ahead of her because she's a bit of a slower reader than me. Um, Animal Farm, I read that one. And so a couple George Orwell books. And I've read I re I read Fahrenheit four fifty one, which I really like. That was a reread. I really like that one. Um I think it's a classic one this year. Classic <coughs> And again, there were a few that I started but haven't finished yet, like East of Eden and North and South. And then, um, so I said five, but I might change that number because I think I read more than five this year. So I think I can aim a little bit more than five. Um, I also want to read more bigger books, and not just fantasy, but fantasy is a little easier for me to read, even if it's a big book. Like I said, it's more, oftentimes it's always, not always, but most times it's very action-packed and exciting and thrilling and interesting, complex stories. And it's not like a dull story about domestic life all the time. Um, and like I said, I want to try to read The Wise Man's Speaker by the end of the year. I think I need to get that one read. Even though the third book, I don't know when that's coming out, I'm going to get it read. I just keep procrastinating it, but then... Every time I read, I might not remember what happened in the other book. I might have to reread the other book anyway. But I want to read The Wise Man's Spear and then reread the other one, even if the third one's fun. But I definitely want to read more bigger books someday. And I'm still reading well of Ascension, The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. And I want to read Royal Assassin by the end of the year. That was one of the books, what are three books you want to read before the end of the year? That one and The Essex Servant is on my one. Um, and I said 10 for that one. Um, and then I also want to read more literary fiction. Like, I still want to keep that goal going. I've read some, but I don't know how many, and I think I want to keep continuing to read more books, more literary fiction. Um, okay, so that's goal number one, reading more of each of those genres. Goal number, number two is a booktube related goal, which is, first off, as much as I love watching booktube, I want to cut down my time of watching booktube, because I feel like there are times when I could be reading a book where I could be working on trying to get my writing done and, and reading and watching series that I've neglected, you know, because... Or I end up spending more time doing multitasking, watching a booktube video, and then watching the show at the same time, and then I end up missing stuff, and I'm not entirely paying attention. So I want to try to limit my time of watching, which, as much as as much as I love watching them, sometimes because sometimes you just watch it just to watch it. You don't, you're not taking it entirely in, and then. The next one is also watch smaller booktubers. I mean, I feel like a hypocrite because I watch the bigger YouTubers and constantly comment on those videos. Well, not constantly. I will comment on those videos. And then, I. but I am a small booktuber. I am a tiny booktuber, in fact. Like, last I checked, I had 40 subscribers. And I don't want to, you know, like I said, I feel like a hypocrite. Because I don't watch those channels who are the same, you know, same size as mine, or maybe a little bit bigger. And my parents just love to get the stuff for my dessert I'm making for class. My, my class, we're doing a, um, because Chaucer's birthday is this month, or his birthday, or it's, I think it's his birthday, so we decide we're going to celebrate, so everybody's bringing in food, so my parents are getting the stuff I need for that. 
Plus, I don't like. I'm glad. Like, I'm so glad my mom said it was okay that I didn't have to go because I, I feel weird going to the store where I work. You know, because I work at a grocery store, and I just feel weird and like it's like I don't want to. I don't want to get my real, my personal life and my work life mixed up. Or something like that. Um. So I might watch smaller booktubers and, you know, just and show my support for those because I'm one of them. And I, like I said, I feel like a hypocrite for not watching them as much. But it's hard also because I'm so, I go through my list, you know, how everybody has that list of who they're subscribed to. I go through my list, and there's so, and of course, the ones that I click the bell icon or the ones I watch on a regular basis are the first ones. So I have to go through the list, click on each channel, see which ones are the smaller channels. And so it's kind of me also being lazy. Okay, and then the last one is I just want to get more creative. And I mentioned this earlier, that I want to try to get more creative. I mean, like I said, some of my, I have limits. Some of them are external limits that I can't really control. Like, I mean, I mean, like, my parents are not tech savvy. I mean, they know enough, but, you know, they don't, you know, they can't really help me with editing these videos. They can't help me get creative with the videos and the setup and the look of them. Like, every time there's a potential virus on my computer, we have to call my uncle in order to ask his son, my cousin, for help. But, and, you know, I don't know how to vlog is another thing. And I, it's one of these things where someone has to be there with me and show me exactly how to do it. And then I have to do it and they have to watch me do it and make sure I'm doing it right. You know, I can't just figure it out. My, I'll get impatient and frustrated. And I'm not smart enough. And I'm more likely to make a mistake and screw it up. Like, download something I shouldn't download or something like that. Or, and... But I do, I have thought about this one idea, I mean, where, like, maybe reading the first chapter of the book I'm reading, or something like that, or, like, do a dramatic reading of some of the books I'm reading, you know? I thought that could be potentially fun, and then I could show my, I mean, and I would love to, love to talk about my writing, but I don't have anything to show you guys. You know, I have the ideas, and the things I've thought about, but I don't have anything to show, so I can't do that, at least not right now, anyway. Maybe I will be able to do it in the future. But the only thing I can think of is maybe, like, doing a, re a dramatic reading of some of the books I'm reading currently. Especially because I really like, you know, I don't like when people, even though I do this when I read in my head, um, I don't like it when people just read the text. Like, they don't put the emotion in it. Which I know, like some of them, like some of the books are reading for class. The form, the poetry format is a little harder to figure out what kind of emotion you're getting. Um, so I know it's kind of hard. Maybe some people are embarrassed, but like I try to put emotion when I when I volunteer to read in class. Like I'm thinking about doing that next time we read. Like, but we might not. We might just talk about in this particular book. Um, but anyway, yeah, I want to get more creative with my channel. Um, and then goal number three is trying, I've called the neglected books goal. Like I said, I need to read, there are some books that I owe my brother-in-law and my sister that I want to read. And... I, there's books that I also that my mom has bought for me and she's made comments before about I haven't seen you read this book you know books that I've asked her to buy for me like the female persuasion she bought that off the internet because I figured it would be cheaper than the bookstore than getting her books a million and you know I always feel guilty because she, she'll say that and then I feel like and then like I feel like I need to read those books but then I have all these other books that I've had for a long time like Portrait of a Lady in North and South, that I have to read those as well. So I'm in a really stressful place sometimes because I will, because of my problem with starting books and not finishing them. <clears throat> and then, um, like I said, I want to read books that I've had on my shelf for a long time, like Portrait of a Lady. I need to get to that one, which, as you can see, I have. So I need to read a little bit more of that one. 
And there's also some books I want to reread. So I did say on here, reread three books. It will obviously have to be one of them, but I won't get that one finished. Um, so yeah, okay. So I've said all of all the things, all the little notes I wrote here that read some of the books that Jess and Ryan have let me borrow, read books that my mom has bought for me, and then reread a few of the books that I read years ago. And read some of the work, some of the books that I have had on my shelf for a long time, like Portrait of a Lady. So those are, those are the goals I'm thinking about. And then, of course, I have personal goals. You know, like, um, that have nothing to do with books that I also need to consider. But this is a book channel, so I'm not going to talk about those. Um, well, if this is, a, this is a tag, an old tag, older tag, so I'm, and since I still feel like I don't know you guys that well yet. I'm still working on that. I don't like tagging people because I feel weird. And I don't know if the people that I would tag would notice. You know, maybe would no would notice. Um, maybe they would. Like, um, like there's some uh, some of my favorite booktubers. I would love for them. I would love to tag them. But then it's like, would they even notice? Because they have so many. They have other so many. They're lives are so busy and all that and they have other channels that they watch so who knows and but like a, and like I said this is not when I say that it's not a pity party or anything it's not me being like hey notice me it's just I generally don't know I just don't think they would notice if I tag them so anyway I'm gonna shut up now because this getting this video is getting super long and I don't know if this will upload and basically I have wasted my time then so if, and I'll have to remake it. So if you guys want to do this video, feel free. It's this tag, this tag not video, this tag. Feel free to do it. Consider yourself tagged. It's a fun little tag and kind of interesting to think about, you know, prepare for the end of the year and what you're going to do next year. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you happen to be watching this video and liked it and you haven't subscribed to me, Feel free to subscribe to me and, of course, click the bell icon for more videos. And I will talk to you all later. All right. Bye.